Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. If you were on YouTube, you might have noticed that there was no video last week. The issue did, in fact, go out, which is still on the website. But let's take a quick moment to go through what happened last week before we get into this week. Starting off with screen space ambient occlusion with visibility bit masks, or SSAOVB, if you really like acronyms. If ambient light is the light that affects all objects in a scene equally, then ambient occlusion is the idea that a given point on a surface is obscured from that light to some extent. Screen space ambient occlusion is a technique for approximating ambient occlusion. It uses the depth buffer to compare the depth of the point being rendered to the depth of the surrounding points and tries to compute the ambient occlusion value based on that. Previously, Bevy implemented a version of SSAO using ground truth ambient occlusion, or GTAO, and 13454 implements an alternative called visibility bit masks. This is most clearly visible by looking at the previous solution, GTAO, compared to the newer solution. There are a number of before and after comparisons, including after comparisons with different settings in this PR, so if you're really interested, go take a look at the PR, but the results look fantastic to me. The required components refactor continues with cameras, meshes and materials, motion blur, anti-aliasing, SSAO, which we just talked about, and SSR, as well as audio. Additionally, 15.269 introduced the ability to use a closure as a required component default value. That can be seen in the API here, which uses a closure. And in 15.458, Bevy got the ability to define required components at runtime, which is useful for plugins that optionally require components based on other enabled plugins, as well as defining requirements for first-party types. For example, if each handle should require your custom rendering data components. And what I think might be the most easily visible addition to Bevy's repertoire, 15631 introduces additive blending for animation graphs. This is the feature that was the last requirement to enable functionality like a walking animation and a sword swinging animation at the same time affecting different bones. The animation masks example has been updated, so definitely go take a look if you're interested in this feature. And that brings us to this week, which, according to my notes, there were over 100 PRs merged last week, which represents a truly incredible effort by the community to get ready for the 0.15 release candidates. 0.15 is really shaping up to be a stellar release, including required components, new animation and curve APIs, and more. There's a whole lot to get into this week, so let's start with some new rendering functionality in Order Independent Transparency. 14876 introduces Order Independent Transparency as an alternative to alpha blending. Alpha blending is achieved by sorting the geometry of a scene and allowing each to contribute, in that sorted order, color to the scene. Order independent transparency instead sorts per pixel, which can result in solving situations in which alpha blending fails, as you can see in this example that I'm showing you right now. This is alpha blending, which hopefully in the video you could see flickering. This is order independent transparency. This is a two-pass technique and the code is really well documented with comments, so if you're interested in digging into the lower levels of rendering, definitely give this PR a read. This implementation comes from Foresight, who is a production Bevy user that has been using this implementation in production for months now without issue. A new 2D screen shake example takes inspiration from the Math for Game Programmers Juicing Your Cameras with Math video from GDC and implements a 2D screen shake example. You can run this with Cargo Run Example 2D Screen Shake. And in our next PR, a number of new functions for operating on image in terms of pixels were added in 10.3.92. These include pixel data offset, pixel bytes, get color at, set color at for different dimensions and mutabilities. A new example, CPU draw, which you can see on the right here, shows off drawing a spiral pattern with these new APIs. And of course, this week, just like last week, the follow-up work for required components is ongoing. Another set of required components PRs went in, this time affecting bevy picking, bevy sprite, reflection probes, and as of 15796, very notably, the component implementation has now been removed from handle. The API changes to enable this were already made in previous required components PRs, but this is definitely one of the things that you're going to want to look out for in 0.15's migration notes. The recently merged retain render world means that entity IDs aren't the same anymore between the main world and the render world. 15582 introduces a new sync component plugin, which accepts a type argument that implements component, which uses the required components behavior to add the sync to render world as a required component for the specified component that you passed as a type argument. The plugin also adds a component hook that will clear all components from the render world entity when C, the component that you added, is removed. 
And 15756 also makes the retained render world a bit more type safe, especially when dealing with main world entity ID keys in collections that are used in the render world. And 15538 introduces the ability to trigger events via animation clips. Use cases for this include playing sounds when a character's feet touch the ground, triggering projectiles at the right time, and more. The animated Fikes example that you can see on the right has been updated to use events to power these nice puffs every time the feet hit the ground, while the animation events example shows off a smaller use case. In 15675, common interpolations were added. These interpolations were powered by the interpolation crate. It's interesting to note that this crate was already used by Bevy Easings, Bevy Tweening, Bevy Tween, Bevy Tween and Captured, Bevy Inoki, Kayak UI, and more. <laughs> And you might say which interpolations were added. And that's great because there's a new example that was added to the showcase to showcase these easing functions in 15703, which you can see on the right here. And for a nice quick one, 15820 adds the ability to specify additional window options. These window options, at least the ones in this PR, only exist on Mac OS. For example, you can see the title bar here. And with the new options, you can see that the title bar is transparent while retaining the window controls. In 0.14, Hierarchy Query Extension powers the ability to iterate over descendants and ancestors with query. And in 15.6.27, that expands this trait to include parent, child, root parent, iter leaves, iter siblings, and iter descendants depth first. Having more tools for traversing hierarchies is really nice while we are all waiting for full entity relations. And the way spans of text are structured has changed, and 15.5.91 really showcases that. The new way to update spans of text, which are now entities themselves, looks a little bit like this with a UI text writer. Note that you'll now have to specify the entity that you're looking to update as well as the index. This is actually very similar to the way that we were using sections before, but obviously is a little bit different. And Bevy's no standard support is growing, and as a result, it's nice to make sure that the improvements being made are kept. A new CI tool was introduced in 15843 to make sure crates that have been made no standard do actually compile for a no standard environment. And of course, Alice's merge train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. We're getting very close to 0 0.15 and the release candidates. So expect Alice's merge trains to be very focused around that and preparing for it. And that brings us to the showcases. First off with Jarl running on a Steam Deck. This is Jarl running natively on a Steam Deck with a stable 90 FPS. It's also interesting to note that there is touch controls on these menus, and these menus do happen to be built with Bevy UI. In our next showcase, we see 700 plus FPS in this no standard demonstration of a Bevy UEFI app. If the prospect of no standard Bevy interests you, consider checking out the tracking issue, which you can find in 15460 for details on how far away this is from actual release. And what would pathfinding be if it wasn't for as many entities as you could possibly pathfind for? This showcases a few optimizations that went into reducing the cost of this pathfinding from about 80 milliseconds to 4 milliseconds. Our next showcase showcases a custom approach to exporting pose, bones, positions, and rotations from Blender into Bevy. This is done via a Python script and allows the author to use a workflow based around new scene creation in Blender. And before I play this, note that this is a very fast updating image if you happen to be sensitive to that. This is a look at the in-progress Bevy pixel map, which is a compute shader based approach to building a Noita-like game. And back on the slower side of things, the author of The Light Mapper has been working on an example Bevy scene while adjusting The Light Mapper to have better support for KTX files, which Bevy supports. The Light Mapper application itself can be found on GitHub under Naxella, The Light Mapper. And up next, we've got a lock picking mini game similar to the one in TES4 Oblivion followed by updates to Rusty Lander. Rusty Lander added new graphics like background terrain and a new spaceship, as well as functionality and bug fixes like increasing the gravity after each successful landing, out of fuel messages, and it now also has a Windows build. This demo shows off Bevy Copperfield, which is an in-progress procedural mesh editor made with Bevy in mind. Once added as a dependency, Bevy's 3D primitives will be available to be turned into an editable mesh with a procgen command. From there, you can extrude, chamfer, and move around any part of the mesh. And this solar system simulation now includes a scenario system, a built-in editor, and support for spice files. In the scenario system, you can create, edit, and launch different compositions of bodies or recreate missions like the Voyager 1. 
while Spice Files contain planetary data from NASA. This is a new Metroidvania style game that has already implemented double jumps, dashes, and damage. And this is a Disco Elysium inspired UI for Yarn Spinner dialogue. Yarn Spinner can be found at yarnspinner.dev. And multiple features were added to this 3D platformer, including water and dissolve shaders, as well as doors and chains using Avian 3D. And right at the end here, you can see this fake wall that dissolves right away. And Bevy 0.12 release header image included a video of a tiny planet city builder temporarily called Polder. The author also spoke about this implementation at the fourth unofficial Bevy meetup, using the title Recreating Townscaper using Rust and Bevy. The city builder is slowly growing into a larger game and recently gained a controllable character. Up next in To Build a Home, now you will need to clean the apartment if the previous tenants left it dirty. And this is showing off continued work on an implementation of Radiance Cascades, a 2D global illumination technique. And here's a web demo for an OK LCH color picker, built using Bevy Color, eGUI, and OpenGL shaders. The source for this one is also available on GitHub. And finally, we've got Tiny Creatures. Tiny Creatures is a Ludumdare 56 compo entry with lots of tiny creatures that you have to combine over successive iterations. And for our crate releases this week, up first we've got Halka 0.2. Halka is a reactivity library powered by the FRP signals of Futures Signals. Halka 0.2 brings Bevy 0.14 support, a migration to observers, a new component-driven API, and more that you can read in the changelog. Next up, we've got Bevy Tenua 0.20. Bevy Tenua is a floating character controller that can be used in 2D and 3D environments and can use Avian or Rapier for physics. Bevy Tenua 0.20 brings a new Tenua built-in knockback action for applying a knockback effect to the character, as well as changing the up direction to be determined by the gravity instead of being fixated to positive Y. Bevy Pixel Map we actually already saw a demo of in this issue. Bevy Pixel Map is an infinite pixel grid that you can edit, quote, really fast, which is meant to drive games similar to Noida. And then we've got Bevy Debug Log. Bevy Debug Log enables viewing the tracing debug log output inside your app, particularly on platforms like mobile where you have no easy way to follow the terminal output. It only uses Bevy UI to display the logs, so no additional dependencies are required. Next up, we've got Bevy Entitile 0.11, which is a 2D tile map library for Bevy with many useful algorithms and tools built in. 0.11 brings a switch to Avian 2D for physics, as well as a number of bug fixes from a refactor. Notably, Wasm is not currently supported, but it is a priority for the next releases. And are you waiting to see what BSN is going to be like? Me too. In the meantime, check out I Can't Believe It's Not BSN, which is a convenient way to spawn hierarchies of entities from a single bundle that also works with required components. And last up, we've got Leafwing Input Manager 0.15. Leafwing Input Manager 0.15 brings the triple axis-like inputs, an attribute macro for your action-like types, and bug fixes galore. Leafwing Input Manager in particular is a really solid input management crate that I would highly suggest you check out if you haven't yet. And that's it for this week. As always, we've got all of the PRs that were merged this week on the website if you are interested in reading them all or getting involved. If you watched it this far, know that next week will be another Tuesday release of This Week in Bevy not a Monday release, and I will see you next week. Have a great rest of your week.